Hey everyone, we are at the Rework Deep Learning Summit in San Francisco, and today I am joined by Adrian. Um, Hi. Would you mind kind of introducing yourself and telling me a little bit about your position and your role? Sure. Uh, so I'm Adrian Gaiden. I lead the machine learning team at uh, TRI, which is uh, the Toyota Research Institute. So we're, uh, we're a subsidiary uh, from uh, Toyota here based in the U.S., so in, uh, in Silicon Valley. And uh, yeah, we're a $1 billion startup working on uh, autom automated driving, robotics, and material science. Amazing. Um, so looking back a little bit, what sparked your interest first? Was it um, sort of the vehicle aspect or the vehicle side of things, or was it more of a focus on AI? So for me, it was, it was clearly AI. Uh, I moved to automated driving like basically two years ago. Um, but I've been doing like uh, computer vision in particular for more than 10 years now. So I, I you know, as a high school kid, I always liked, um, I was a weird kid, I liked math and philosophy. And That's was, not weird. That's yeah, fun. That's and the fun. intersection <laughs> of them is not huge. Uh, but then when I discovered computer science and, you know, the builder's high, the fact that you can build stuff with a keyboard, um, um, and these three, basically, the intersection of those three, there was something really interesting, which was artificial intelligence. And because it has both aspects of math and aspect of computer science and, and very deep philosophical impl implications, that's why it's such an amazing field to be in. And as I did my PhD in computer vision, and I started to do more and more work uh, around deep learning, and, and it started to not just be in the lab, but actually could have an impact in the world. At the same time, automated driving started to become a reality, not just a mere dream in the future. And that's when um, basically sparks flew and, and my research uh, started to have applications there and that's how I moved to automated driving as probably the most exciting application of, of deep learning today in my opinion. Absolutely. It's incredible. It's such an ever-evolving uh, field and it's, it's exciting. I want to know what kind of projects you're working on right now. Uh, what are your sort of biggest hurdles and how are you overcoming them? Yeah. So. There's very few. No, I'm joking. There's a lot. <laughs> uh, it's a very challenging problem. So in automated driving, um, one of the main challenges that we're working on is how do we make progress towards the, the long view of uh, full autonomy, you know, like level mm -hmm. four, level five, everywhere. Right? Toyota, being the number one car maker in the world, has 100 million cars on the road today, sells 10 million cars every year. We care about the full vision, the full mm -hmm. robotic system. Um, and how do we make progress towards that long-term vision while you know, saving lives today and, and shipping uh, deep learning products that help further the cause of full autonomy and at the same time make the cars smarter. And my team in particular, the team I lead, which is the machine learning team, we're really trying to bring deep learning and computer vision and recent advances there to really accelerate the progress uh, towards this in automated driving. So, so speaking um, of your projects and uh, kind of the long-term vision and long-term goal, um, how do you see success um, in, in short-term versus long-term? And what are, what are your focuses there? Um, we're trying really, really hard to bring those two in alignment. Um, so we, we want it all. We want the short-term success and the long-term success. And, and let's say it like this, we want the short-term success not for the short-term glory and mm -hmm. riches, but because we think it's the path to the long-term success. So we have our, our first product for long-term autonomy we call Chauffeur, which is the level four autonomy everywhere, all the time. That's a long ways away uh, for us, but for everyone too. Um, it's, it's like well-scaled, handling adverse weather and everything is really, really complicated. But that's what we want to do. That's where we want to be. So while we're developing parts of the stack, let's say for instance, we, I, my team were developing deep learning models. If one of those models is not just helpful for the autonomy stack, but it can also save lives, like be shipped into cars today and let's say prevent crashes in the case of people burning red lights or prevent collisions, uh, rear end collisions, uh, more rear end collisions and these kind of things, we're trying to ship that as soon as we can. And that has the benefits of, of having short term impact in terms of saving lives, making the car smarter while we're building incrementally um, the full autonomy stack. To, your, to the larger goal. Yes. And the larger vision. Yes. Amazing. So, so in your presentation earlier, which I'm, I am heartbroken that I missed, <laughs> um, so I'd love if you could talk a little bit about it right now. Um, you, you mentioned kind of moving beyond supervised learning yeah. um, in autonomous driving. Yes. Um, care to chat a little bit and yeah, sure, of course. catch me up a little bit? Yeah, of course. Uh, happy to. So um, as I mentioned, we have this kind of like two uh, like uh, vision uh, that uh, are in alignment. So this like long-term autonomy, chauffeur, and, and this like incremental making the car uncrashable, which we call Guardian, so mm -hmm. our Guardian project. And so 
in order, the, both these two systems, they care about being global, like worldwide, anytime, etc. So the main problem is that when you have over 100 million cars on the road today, like bad things happen all the time, like right now and yeah. again. And right again, now. and no, no. yeah, it's it's crazy. So like, it's kind of like mind-boggling. And so, what we have to do in terms of like to make deep learning a key part of those uh, AI systems, these robotic systems, it has to be robust. Mm -hmm. And robustness in machine learning right now means it has to see a lot of data. Um, that is both how you get to accuracy and how you get to a certain level of robustness and generalization. And luckily, we have a lot of data because we have a lot of cars. Uh, the problem is that current deep learning technology requires human eyeballs to look at all that data and painstakingly label it. Click on pixels to say that's a sky pixel, that's a tree pixel, that's a mm. road pixel, to explain to the car, like I was explaining to my daughter when she was one year old, this is blue, this is red, etc. So this is called supervised learning. And with that, if you can do that in certain applications, you get really great results. But most of the data we have will never be able to be labeled. So it seems very painstaking and very... Yes. Just, yeah. So you can imagine, even if you hire all of humanity to label Toyota data, they won't be able to cut it, right? So the main challenge we're addressing is how do we move beyond labeling? So we mm -hmm. have some amount of data that is labeled, most of the data that is unlabeled. How do we get value out of that? Meaning, how do I squeeze all that data into my deep neural networks? That's what I mean by beyond supervised mm -hmm. driving. And we made recently two contributions in that space, technical contributions. One is using simulation, and another one is using geometry as a source of labels, so basically replacing human labels by geometry rules. Okay, that's incredible. Amazing. So I, I imagine with, with so many big projects and, and you know, again, focusing on your short-term goals, your long-term goals, everything in between, I can't imagine what a day in your life is like. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, so whenever I meet people at the coffee machine in the morning and they say, how are you doing? My answer has consistently been for the past two years, I'm not bored. Uh, <laughs> That's so great though. My day is very diverse. Um, so as I have kind of like two hats. Um, um, so because I lead the machine learning team, I have like a people management responsibilities and I have tech leadership responsibilities. And so as a people manager, of course, I, I, I meet with my team, one-to-ones, um, -one, so team meetings, etc. So the, the usual management job, except that I manage people that are way smarter than I am. Um, and so I try to be on my best game with them um, because they're really amazing and my team is really, really great. At the same time, uh, I'm a tech lead um, and, so, uh, and a research scientist, which means that I get to contribute data and even make decisions about very big problems around machine learning, for instance, about like infrastructure, but also about research agenda, uh, so establishing the research agenda and making sure that our IDs contribute value, are in alignment, and whenever I have the time, uh, I, I try to do some coding and, um, and you know, read papers. I do a lot of reviews, like code reviews, uh, paper reviews, uh, and you know, um, so I try to stay as technical as possible and make contributions, uh, scientific contributions to um, the work that my team is doing. So truly never bored. <laughs> truly never bored. Yeah, this is, this is really amazing. I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm a high speed type of person. And uh, yeah, um, I live by the Neil Young motto. It's better to uh, burn out than to fade away. And go. I hope I'm not going to burn out. But so far, it's all good. I think that um, one thing that I wanted to, to convey uh, to whoever's listening is that we're really on a mission. Um, and this is not a short-term mission, this is a marathon. This is this long-term mission of inventing this uh, like truly automated driving platform and, and in the future even robots. So turning Toyota into a mobility company and an AI company. And the ethical values of Toyota and I think their technical approach to be are perfectly in alignment with all these objectives. Um, so we are hiring a lot of people. We're growing extremely fast. Like uh, TRI was like three years old. We're now more than 350 people. Uh, but we need all the help we can get. And I think it's rare to have a place where you can have exciting scientific problems, exciting applications with a tight loop in between those two, and at the same time live according to um, strong ethical values and have a positive impact on the world. So I'm, I'm really uh, happy and I really hope that a lot of people are going to join us and help us on this mission. 
Yeah, I, I feel like it's a it's a common uh, a common thread sort of woven between a lot of different AI projects is that you know it's not a it's not a sprint it's a marathon yeah. and I feel like a lot of people are, are trying to get that sprint trying to do the, the 300 yeah. meter dash and, and get ahead yeah. and have that glory but it is it does feel like more of a collaborative um, long term yeah. sort of marathon. Yeah. Um, so speaking of your team, what what kind of roles and what kind of people are you are you looking for? Yeah. So we we are my team is really in this kind of like unique uh, diversity, which is we have uh, both scientists and engineers. And on the day to day, they work really closely together. And the research scientists um, are, have expectations in terms of like being creative, proposing new research uh, projects. Like we have these big challenges around unsupervised learning, large scale uh, learning. And we really need all of their creativity and, and, and that they have great autonomy and freedom. Um, but at the same time, they need to, you know, make ideas work. And that's right why deep learning is, is so great right now, because you can have awesome ideas that actually work. Uh, engineers, and especially machine, en machine learning engineers in the team, are working really tightly with the scientists, even contributing ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, but their main expectation is to really provide a lot of support, implement state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms, helping grow our infrastructure. We have like a very um, cutting-edge cloud infrastructure. And, um, and so we really want um, people that can think, do, and care about ideas and, and making it happen. Is there anywhere that people can find more information about you, keep up with your projects, sure. um, yeah. everything in general? So um, I encourage you to uh, reach out to me directly. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on Twitter also. Uh, my handle is uh, at nothing, so A-D-N-O-T-H-I-N-G. And uh, we have uh, careers uh, websites on uh, our website, TRI.global. Um, we have many, many, uh, like we're growing fast. So you, you'll find me. There you go. <laughs> That's kind of a wrap-up question too. I'd love to hear about what you're most excited about here. Like what you're more most excited about um, panels that you're going to check out or anything like that. Yeah. So um, I just the, the conference just has started. Uh, so far, I've seen one other talk <laughs> besides mine, uh, which is uh, Tejas Kulkarni's talk uh, on inverse graphics. I think it's a really, really interesting topic. And because we work on a lot of simulation. Uh, that's a topic I'm really excited about. And we have collaborations with MIT and Stanford and many universities which are like at the frontier of this. Um, and I'm really excited about uh, the unknown unknowns. You know, that's the hard thing in automated driving. You don't know what you don't know. And I'm excited to discover here what I don't know at this summit too. I love that. That's super exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, hopefully people can check you out, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, keep up with your projects. Thank you so much. Thank you.